to sit so far apart. I thought we planned sitting together. <laughs> <laughs> this is so awkward, as all of my interviews are. <laughs> so, Mikkel Zvein, <laughs> you are the CEO of Zendesk, which is like an assist lead, but not owned by Salesforce. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way of putting it, yeah. So, tell me a little bit about what, what uh, makes Zendesk better than desk.com. So, uh, well, so Zendesk, first of all, it's uh, uh, originally, my accent is from Denmark. I'm originally from Copenhagen. We founded the company in 2007 in Copenhagen, moved it to uh, San Francisco in 2009. We raised $26 million. Today we have 250 employees. We have more than 15,000 customers here of 5,000 in Europe. Um, and we basically provide a platform for customer service and engagement. We've been around for quite a year. We are the market leader. There's a lot of smaller competitors trying to do what we do. Um, but Salesforce we is really small. Well, um, <laughs> no, I think that you know, Salesforce, is a, Salesforce is a great company. Uh, uh, Senders love Salesforce. We, uh, a lot of our customers are using Salesforce together. We ourselves are Salesforce customers. And uh, I think Salesforce has really paved the way for a lot of companies, including ourselves, in terms of cloud adoption. And that is, you know, it's a huge market out there. The whole enterprise industry, the whole enterprise software industry is being disrupted these years by new cloud companies, such as Salesforce, such as Box, such as Yammer, such as ourselves. And it's a huge opportunity. And Salesforce has definitely kind of paved the way for companies like us. So what do you think the most disruptive factor? Because con consumer inter uh. <laughs> Sorry, I thought I was on the different stage. Don't you feel like the stage is like a ghetto for, for enterprise software? <laughs> All right, so <laughs> it's true. So enterprise software is going through a resurgence. It's kind of going through a, a revolution, and it's definitely sexy again, right? Because the big companies like Oracle and SAP are being disrupted. So what do you think is the biggest disruptive factor? Is it the cloud? Is it mobile? Is it SaaS? Is it social? I think it's all of the above. Like the consumerization definitely means a lot. It means that that uh, users that you and I are bringing IT into the enterprise because we can use it, because it's uh, easy to use, because we can understand it ourselves, we can roll it out. Um, so companies like us are selling more and more to users than to buyers of software. And that just makes a big difference because you can persuade users through results. You can build products that gives instant results, the users understand that, and then they acquire the software. So what was the one moment that you knew that there would be a shift? Is there one defining, is there an acquisition possibly? Uh, <laughs> I don't know if there's like one moment I could pick out for the kind of the the new generation of enterprise companies, you know, like when you see billion dollar price tags on small pre new companies, you understand that's a shift. But um, I think it's, 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 it's been... I mean, you see billion dollar price tags in consumer. Uh, yeah, and? So, I mean, <laughs> if, if consumer's always been sexy. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. No, I'm, I'm, enterprise software definitely has an issue with being non-sexy, but... It's getting uh, sexier. It's, well, it, it, it's, it's, I think it's, it's because we can, we can sell to users rather than to just the acquirers of software, than to the traditional IT buyers. We can sell to users, and that means that we have to build it sexy. It has to be useful. It has to be you know, appealing. It has to provide instant results. Thus, it has to be more sexy. And you know, therefore, it is a little bit more sexy. We're talking a lot about sex here. Yeah, we're talking yeah. about sex. <laughs> what do you think about the bring your own device movement? Does that affect you guys at all? Of course. That's another, that's another part of the whole consumerization. Uh, when, when it's just so much easier to bring in your own device um, as a, as a, basically a, as a consumer into your enterprise, it, uh, it, the, the, the companies have to embrace that and they have to respect that because there's no way around it. They can't control it. Um, and that just gives a, like we can't ask our employees in our organization to use tools that are less efficient or less sexy or less convenient than the tools that they use in their everyday life. You know, uh, technologies such as iTunes or Facebook and so on are pretty advanced technologies. It's complicated stuff that they're doing. 
Um, so you can't have a lower bar for your enterprise application. You can't have an enterprise, a, enterprise application that looks like you know, a pile of manure and it's complicated to operate and you can't figure out what's going on. And then people can go home and do really, really complicated transactions on their home system in an interface that is beautiful and, and unique. So, so you're saying that consumers now have the buying power, but aren't IT managers still making these decisions? And aren't they usually leaning towards the things that look like a pile of manure? So I think that one of the things that is really, really interesting with the, with the consumerization is kind of the aspect of the democratis democratization of uh, technologies too. Like today, company like us, we can sell products to small companies that make them just as powerful at you know, uh, customer service and customer engagement as you know, traditionally something only large enterprises could do. So suddenly we give small businesses, we give them tools to disrupt and compete with traditionally much larger organizations. So um, I would say that I don't think large enterprises has any, you know, they don't really have a choice. If they want to compete with a lot of, with a new generation of small, medium enterprises that are disrupting them on so many different levels because of the democratization of a lot of, this, uh, of, the, lot of these IT tools, they have to embrace it. What do you think the biggest challenge is competing against the giants? No, I don't think it's, it, well, the challenge is the same old challenges. You, you know, you have to, if you want to compete with a big legacy player, you need to define the playing field yourself. And, and that is what, you know, businesses like us and Box and Yammer and all these kinds. How specifically is Zendesk defining the playing field? So um, I think first of all, like when, when we entered this space, nobody really cared about customer service or engagement. <laughs> it wasn't really sexy. Like it was the, it, the bottom feeders of the organization used to work in service and support. Um, but there's a big trend now in terms of, uh, there's a big trend now in terms of really embracing your customers for the long-term relationship and building these long-term relationships. On social media, right? Including social media, like, you know, social media, so my nephew and niece, they don't, they don't send me an email or, or, or call me on my phone. They send me a, a message on Facebook or follow me on Twitter. So social media in many ways is just a new channel for the new generation. Um, and companies need to embrace that. How is Zendex handling these kinds of inbound complaints? So basically we just see them as another channel. Alongside you know, your web forms, your emails, alongside your, uh, your call center and all these kind of things, your, your Twitter streams and your Facebooks are just another channel that you, can, uh, that you can work with in the same interface. So speaking of uh, <laughs> sexy, Yammer, <laughs> another billion dollar price tag. Yeah. Um, do you think Microsoft is given up on, on consumer internet and focusing on enterprise and gadgets because it knows that it can't compete with something like Facebook. I mean, it's just completely thrown social and consumer out the window. So I don't know. Um. <laughs> I mean, the Amber things, they haven't announced it yet, but no. that's a, more a PR issue than a yeah, actually probably. having done it issue. So I think that it, it's always easy for people in the Silicon Valley and for us to make fun of Microsoft. Um, so we do that a lot. But, um, but I think like, one thing that you, it's important to remember is that Microsoft has always been fantastic and selling, always had a fantastic channel to the SMBs, to all the small, medium enterprises in the world. Microsoft has always been fantastic at selling stuff into them. So in many ways, kind of Microsoft has been a leader of the democratization of a lot of these technologies. Um, and, you know, it, it's a big company. They can do a lot of things. I, you know, I, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's probably one of these companies still have, you know, many shots left in there, you know gun or whatever you say. <laughs> I think they, they still have a lot of, lot of opportunities to do different things. It's of course it's a company that is huge and, and, and diverse in so many different industries. I don't know what they will do in social and the social enterprise and all of that stuff, but you know, they will get to the game in time, I don't know. What do you think they're going to use Yammer for? So it, it, I think it's an extension of, we all know that, that, uh, we all know that, uh, that Microsoft is really, really big in the enterprise, especially on the internal side, like with all that SharePoint stuff and so on. And so I think Yammer is a very much like a natural extension of, of being big in the enterprise. It, like Yammer, like I don't know how many here uses Yammer. We use this Yammer. We've used Yammer for, you know, since we basically, since we became a company more or less. 
you use Yammer. It's Very just, it's, 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 it's in many ways a simple tool, but it's a fantastic tool in terms of transforming your company into a tool where everybody is on the same page as to what's going on. Um, I mean, it's probably the, one of the most successful um, consumerized enterprise companies, I think. Yeah. I mean, because it's infiltrate. It's almost like a Trojan horse in, in everyone's company. We use it. We can't get rid of it. No. There's nothing better. Yeah. I bet you Zendesk is sort of the same way. Is there a non-cloud competitor to Zendesk? Oh, there's a bunch of them. Okay. There's a bunch of them, but they're all, you know, dying slowly. How do you... Why are they dying slowly? <laughs> <laughs> no, but, you know, um, I don't know, like, in, mm -hmm. in five years from today, who will buy and, and maintain their old servers or, you know, who's going to do that? That's ridiculous. <laughs> so the, that market is slowly dying, yes. So what's the, what's the sexiest thing about the enterprise to you? What are you looking forward to five years from now? What's, what's the world look like to, I think to that, Middlesbrough? So seen from our perspective, like, the, what... What I think what enterprises really strive for is to build real customer relationships. It, to, to, in this subscription, subscription economy where it's, it's not as much a question about how much stuff I can sell to you right now, it's very much a question about the long-term relationship building, like subscription customers that come back to you month after month, year after year, and so on. It's actually an investment acquiring a customer, and you have to look, you have to look you have to look at the long-term value of that customer to understand the real value of the customer. And I think in that regard, building long-term customer relationships is something that every enterprise has to embrace. Um, and, 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 th and, and that is basically how do, you, how do you create a real relationship with a company, with an enterprise as a customer. And that is some of the stuff that we try to help our customers with. So if Balmer came to you with a $1.2 billion check would you sell? It, 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 it's one of these things, you know, how do you, how do you say no to a billion dollars? I don't know. It's, but how do you say no to a hundred million dollars? You know, I know that. <laughs> From who? I've heard. You know, From who? Long story. Say it. No. <laughs> we should at least get some news. Salesforce? <laughs> Microsoft? Um, Microsoft would be super interesting, right? They'd build up a, a suite of, of enterprise offerings. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Who offered you $100 million? <laughs> <laughs> no, but, you know, it's, I think that, I think there's a whole, there's a whole new generation of software companies, and I think it's, it's, a, okay. it's an amazing opportunity to be able to Which be Which one offered you $100 million? <laughs> No, but I think like we all we all try to what do you what is the American term like hit for the fences or go for the long run here because it is an interesting opportunity like being being part of a revolution of the and a democratization of these enterprise tools is a fantastic opportunity. Uh, a lot of the traditional companies in this space are going to fold over the next five ten years, and there's a whole generation of new companies coming up. And to be part of that is who just are some of your favorites? My favorites, Asana. Asana is, of course, super interesting. Box is, of, you know, we success are... Success factors were super... Of course. Yeah. Um, like, for example, both Yammer and Box are companies we are products we've been using for many, many years. Um, and and uh, it just changes, like, we as a company, we are 250 people. We don't have any servers inside the house. We don't have any, like, real technology uh, inside our own uh, walls. Um, we d until recently, we didn't even have an IT department. Um, for us, the cloud has been a trajectory that we have subscribed to as a, as a company that has enabled us to provide to a global audience a tool uh, that they that have been able to scale indefinitely. Uh, helped companies, for example, one of, our, one of our customers is Groupon. They came to us when they were a very, very small company up in Chicago, a few people. How, yeah, how do you manage a company with the needs that size. Exactly, but that's, you know, they, they come to a company like Sendis because we can, you know, we can, we can scale to that kind of crazy growth. They can grow from zero to, they have several thousand support people all across the world using Sendesk. And they, did, they went through that growth in only, a, you know, a, 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 in very, very few years. And they need, you know, they need these flexible, 
uh, uh, agile tools to help them with that kind of trajectory. They could never have been, they couldn't, you know, Groupon could never have existed without cloud tools. Never. So, uh, so other than Yammer and Box and... Oh, there's a lot of them. That's, you know, including Salesforce. That, there's, a, there's a whole new generation here of tools coming. So if you weren't uh, CEO of Zendesk, which company would you want to be CEO of? I, I, I couldn't imagine any other company to be the CEO of. Right, thank you. <laughs> I was trying to get that answer. But still didn't work. All right, thank you, Michael. Thank you, Alexis.